Welcome back, everybody, to The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. I want to welcome in uh, our next guest. Uh, he's, a, he's a friend of mine for a few years now. We, uh, we got to know each other. Uh, Joe McHale is joining the show for the first time. Welcome to the show, Joe. How are we doing? I'm all right. Well, you should tell him how we met or were, you know, started. I was going to ask this question. Yeah, to you. I said, do you remember the first time we actually met? Do you? It was on the field. <laughs> it uh, was not on the field. And by field... I, and by field, I mean the Studio City Farmers Market. Actually, this is, and I don't, you know, this is, this will be, this will be maybe some knowledge to you. We met on a flight from Burbank to Phoenix. I don't know what you were going there for. I was going to call a football game, but I remember you getting off, and I had my cougar bag with me, and I just kind of took it off and placed it right in front of your face, and then said, "Hey, Joel, Ryan Leaf here, Cougar. Thought I'd say uh, hi." Wow. So what is that? Ten years ago? I don't know. It can't be ten years ago because I was in prison ten years ago. So probably a little bit, a little mm. bit earlier than that. Unless you came to Montana to visit me in prison, which you didn't. You didn't. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not allowed in Montana anymore because <laughs> you know all those bumper stickers that say we're full. Montana's full. I'm like, mm, okay. It's not. Uh, full. Yeah, it's not full. But no, I have a terrible memory because see, see you. You quit drugs and alcohol, and I have just stayed <laughs> drinking straight, red straight wine. Yep. I just like red wine. I'm just like, it hits the reset button. I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, I do find it funny that um, obviously we're both from the Northwest, and I think Montana. Does Montana count as the Northwest? Yeah, it does. It does. I count it as the Northwest. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, we're at a farmer's market buying, uh, you know, oranges and apples and eggs. And I was like, oh, here's one of the greatest athletes to come out of the Pacific Northwest. He's just pushing a stroller, buying some kumquats and some organic uh, rice and maybe some mushrooms. And uh, and I was just like, this is what a wonderful, wacky, great life. It, it was. And I remember. Uh, after meeting you, me telling my wife, I'm like, uh, it's so odd to be able to run into people in Studio City here in Los Angeles and uh, get to know them. And then, uh, I, you know, to give some people a kind of a peek behind the curtain during the pandemic, like, like you and I were texting a lot because we were like showing each other our grilled meats. We, we got really into grilling. Yeah. We were home all the time. Not only would we show our finished product, we'd then show like the bone, like when we had finished it. Like we were men, we ate meat, and now we're going to show it to one another. And that's when we became like six-year-olds where our <laughs> yeah. moms were like, Bend, make sure you have, to, you, have to, you have to finish your entire plate. Yep. Yeah, if I had an exercise during the pandemic, I would be... I would be in one of those rascals just driving around the farmer's market, loading up bags because I couldn't walk. I ate so much. It yeah. was. I saw a picture cool. of myself. I saw a picture of myself right at the beginning of the pandemic, I think. And I just went, oh, oh, that's not good. And so, yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> like I, I went I went completely the opposite direction. It it, it benefited me and my family. So, um, yeah, well, I was naked. Thank you. It is L.A in my own bathroom and my wife saw me and I'm like, what do you think? And she just goes, you could lose a few. And I was like, <gasps> oh no. And I ran screaming and I, I think I ran like a, like an ultra marathon without stopping, just naked running through Los Angeles, trying to lose a couple. Well, uh, I, I think that, you know, you, I know well that you're, you're a, you're a Husky. Um, your Huskies have, have done, pretty darn well this year they added a new head coach they've got a really good quarterback they are you going to go to the game friday night are you going to make that journey to to the rose bowl maybe uh, and ironically i am going to seattle but it's for my high my delayed high school reunion oh really so i am not going to go but speaking of and i only talk good or talk well about um the cougs the uh, washington state university cougs I, obviously within the context of the huskies i hate you i hate the team yes. i hate anything but if i will defend the pac-12 and defend washington teams until uh my dying breath but you guys looked tremendous last week and it and then other than that last part of the fourth quarter I was like, they're going to beat Oregon, and we're going to be a great – it's going to be a good state year. But you guys looked great. You have everything you need. So uh, after last year, which was the battle of the interim coaches, 
And it was so dark. It was a dark time. And who would have thought that just a few months later, like, hey, we got yeah. our stuff together. Let's go. So I'm um, when we beat MSU, I couldn't, I was like, we even look, it wasn't lucky. It was like, oh, it was a convincing win. Let's go. That's great. This is, let's do it. Have you uh, inquired uh, into the, uh, the, the t-shirts that are being sold? The big Penix energy t-shirts? Yeah, I was offered one from Simply Seattle. His name is Jamie Munson. And uh, yeah, um, I just going to go full. Just it, the one I had, it just says uh, penis which I realized had nothing <laughs> to do with the player and people. I was like, go Huskies. And I'm like, okay, weirdo. And <laughs> so I got to swap that one out. Uh, very, ex yes. I think that's, wait, do you agree that Wazoo is better? Well, I always have to say that. Yes. Um, yeah. I think, I think you guys have a quarterback right now. It's probably top five in the country. The way he's playing. I agree. No, no. I will take a dump on the Huskies. During the Ty Willingham years when we had zero <laughs> wins. Had zero wins. And guess what? Zero. When you, and he kept his job. When you played Washington State, both teams had zero wins. I can say that. Oh. I can say in my lifetime that I am not from the university that could not win at least one football game in a season. It. Uh, how did he keep his job? That's what... And now I hear, like, I, I don't know what kind of a guy he is. I hear he's like a assistant golf coach now. But how do you go, Z like, if I sh was in a television show and you I showed up no not one knowing, it? yeah, like, no one watched it and zero, and I had zero lines. Or, excuse me, I memorized none of my lines. I show up and I'm not in costume. And uh, let's say I'm just throwing monkey feces around. <laughs> As, or my own feces, like a monkey would. And they'll be like, okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for being here. That's it might make, great. It, it might make it better that you brought a monkey to, to use his feces. Then that would even be more <laughs> outrageous. You're like, yeah. Bonzo, throw it. <laughs> and it's, I, I don't, look, I know this is, uh, it's going way back. Uh, it's That's a few years ago. But then I think the next year they got one win. Or maybe it was two. And, they were, and I was like, if you add up, they're like, Two and 24 over two. I was just like, geez, Louise. All right. People, I don't know who's watching this show, but uh, you get to hear us scream. And yeah, it was always like Seahawks were good. Huskies terrible. And then it would go like, whoa, oh, but they were never really the same. And it, it's anyway. kind of the kind of the way that it is this year. I don't think the Seahawks are going to be very good. You know, you were pretty outspoken about the Russell Wilson trade. Uh, uh, how, yeah. how are things, how are that treating you uh, down there? I, I saw you on, I saw you on the Manning cast week one that you know look at you big time that's right uh, i was supporting my team i mean look i it, just winning that first game was great and uh what believe i think look i don't think we're as elite as we were in 2014 or 2015 of course uh but clearly things had not worked great for the last few they were okay i mean we went to the playoffs all the time um and I know that Russell left with a lot of his contract left, uh, but 10 years is a very long time. And we, as I've said this before, we shouldn't have booed him, uh, but we should never give anybody an advantage when we are at home. So screaming during the game was well justified and drown, you know, try to get them so they can't hear what's going on. But booing him, I think, was a mistake. They're going to make statues to the guy because he brought us a, uh, he brought us a Super Bowl win, which uh, is an incredibly difficult thing to do in the best of you know circumstances. Look at look at Jerry Jones grinding his teeth down every season, thinking he's done it. He's got every tool he needs, and he does. He's always got a good team, but he hasn't won a Super Bowl since Troy Aikman. Yep, he tried to do it with me. I, he tried to put me in the quarterback position in Dallas. We we'll see all how that worked out for everybody. Um, before I let you, before <laughs> you I let are you. the most wonderful. Look, your story, like I watched your uh, thirty for thirty or the ESPN thing, and it was so tremendous. You were so great. You're so wonderfully transparent and way too cool. And you, you there's no airs about you, and it's so refreshing. And when people are like. What's Ryan Leaf like? I'm like, other than being a coog, he's the most tremendous person you've ever met. He's he's way he always like he should not be this cool. 
He looks like a Viking. You should grow your hair out and grow all that out and carry it like an ax with you. Uh, yeah, I think, that but, would, I think that would scare people, to be honest with you. It shows like a serious level of intelligence and also emotional intelligence for someone like you to go through what you've been through and then uh, and then be where you are now. And uh, I, there's there's not many there's not many cases like that. And, you know, I I get, a, you know, like I get passed over for a role and I cry for two and a half days and then I stop again, stop using the toilet. I'll just do it outside. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, you. I, I hope you. Yeah, I hope this show is a huge hit because uh, people need to know how cool Ryan Leaf is. I appreciate that. I, I do. I'm you know, it doesn't cost me anything to be self-deprecating. I've watched you for years uh, kind of have that same mentality. So I, I, I just kind of steal from people that I respect and I look up to. And so it doesn't cost me anything to be self-deprecating at all. In fact, it allows other people who may be going through something similar to know it's okay. Like that doesn't define you. That doesn't yeah. mean anything in who you are. You can be whatever you want to be today if you choose to do so. And so I appreciate you too. Yeah. And as David, as David Bowie says, as David Bowie says, you can't steal from a thief. Uh, Cause I stole all my, I would just watch David Letterman. I'd be like, that guy takes a dump on himself every night and he's the king of television. Yep. And uh, yeah. It, you have the um, you have the comedian's mentality of like, man, that was OK. What I, I did, I, but. I agree. Like my, I have I'm the oldest brother. My middle brother's an actor and he's a comedian like and everybody says he's the funny one in the I'm the funny <laughs> one in the family. Everybody. I am the funny one. I, speaking of which, I want to ask you this question because, you know, he started in sketch comedy and um, and, and he, that's that's what he does. But I think that every time he goes and is anywhere it feels like he's got to be on all the time is that people know you as a comedian they, they've seen you in your stuff and you're funny uh do you feel like you have to be on when you're out in public as a as an actor because of that identity or do you do you feel like people don't give mm -hmm. you the, the maybe the credit of the the acting chops that you really have oh i usually wear a flower that squirts water into people's faces and i'm like so you're gotcha. a clown so you're a clown yeah you yeah um, well, there's a certain, if I, yeah, a certain, like if people recognize me, I don't go like, please, I am not telling jokes today. Um, so if you could just move <laughs> along, uh, I, I am such an, a, uh, I mean, I am an extreme extrovert. I am a golden retriever of a human being. So, uh, I, I think half the reason I went into performing is just so people could look at me on stage. Cause I want that attention. Uh, that doesn't mean I stroll through an airport wearing sunglasses and, uh, you know, a community hoodie going like, here he is. Uh, <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, if I put a baseball, I, I don't even think about it. Like when I'm running to you at the Studio City Farmer's Market, I'm like, oh, it's a person I know. But um, my natural state is just uh, being sarcastic and telling jokes, which my kids just they lay down a suppressing fire to stop me from doing that all the time uh so i don't know i don't feel when i walk outside I, it's not like you know i've been I, i've been with people who are so famous right. that they not be like every like they're the the entire nation swarms to them i was out with Guy Fieri, of all people, last weekend after an Imagine Dragons charity event. That was two name drops in one sentence. Two, two, two in one. And uh, uh, and I was like, oh, man, this is, he is, I mean, sure, he's wearing a co the costume of Guy Fieri. Um, but he's famous. But, but like, like he is he's, famous. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's he, across the spectrum of people. He is just, people are like, whoa, like they freak out. And I was like, oh, yeah. That that is a different level. He's the nicest man you've ever met. On top of all that, so um, anyway, the, uh, I don't feel. Does your brother feel like he needs to be on all the time? You know, I kind of feel like he does, um, and it's unfortunate sometimes. I think, but um, you know, he finally he's, he's finally got himself a, a recurring role. He's on the new spinoff of Yellowstone, so it's it's not it's not a it's a dramatic role, right? It's, he doesn't have to be funny. Like he's got it. Yeah. And so I think that's 
I think that's going a long ways for him. And so I'm really proud of him. And I know how, how hard old is he? He's uh, 41. All right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, he's going to mellow out and that probably will make him even funnier, which is. He is. I mean, I, I, I do say this. I mean, I, he, he makes me laugh. Like anytime I need to like really laugh, I go to his like audition reel and I just I watch some of the stuff that he does uh -huh. and it makes me that's laugh. Great. And that's that's the humanity aspect of it. Uh, uh, for you, all of the viewers out there that don't know about Joel's dramatic roles, uh, one in particular I came across the other night. I was watching this film called Ted and there was this character <laughs> in it who played this very kind of mysterious rich douchebag and it, all of a sudden your, your face popped up on the screen yes i like that you think that's a dramatic role <laughs> I'm very happy yes that was the very serious part of the talking bear uh, talking bear movie uh, uh yeah well, no seth mcfarland let me say anything i wanted and a lot of it ended up on the floor because it wasn't as funny as what he had come up with but uh but yeah, that was really fun. And I, I got the, to the make the part that I loved. I think the part that I loved too, I think I, sh I, I was, was on TV. I took a uh, screenshot of it. I sent it to you and I said, this, the Tom Skerritt line was the one that sold it for me. I mean, it just, I mean, what was from, the line? I think you had a picture of Tom Skerritt on the wall and you were like, you were looking at uh, Wal Wahlberg and you were like, yeah, that, I know Tom Skerritt. And that, like, no. that was the big, that was the big thing, you know, like, uh, really funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was funny. Uh, I, yeah, I forgot about that. Jeez, I guess it's a good sign if I can't even remember what I did. I remember having Lance Armstrong's nut and then saying we dove the shit out of that pool. Uh, yeah, I was just a real douche. Yeah, they they cut out the part where I was licking Mila Kunis's chair. That would have been. That would have been. That would have been the. the yeah. That's the, in the B roll. So the something, for to, something for my kids to look forward to later in their life when the, they want to remember me. Yeah, the coolest thing about you know being on TV and being in the public eye is when you go home and you told me before the show that like the wife's gone, two kids, I'm the sheriff for nine days. I had the same thing with my kiddo the other day, and I mean you are just. Like you are the very bottom of the totem pole, regardless of what anybody else has thought about you or thinks about you or says about you when you're being the father to these kids. Yeah, and not doing it nearly as well as my wife. Yeah, and too. Uh, yeah, no, she's the rocks. And she also works, so it's not like, uh, <laughs> so she gets a lot done and uh, I get about half done. And then I feel so proud of myself. And then my kids are like, nice, way to go. If you had done this, then we wouldn't be in this situation. But you did that, and now we're here, and it sucks. So uh, so it was pizza last last night, and um, I really did not cook it. And I should have cooked something, but I, I, couldn't, bring, I couldn't do it. But uh, <laughs> as long as my wife is getting a little break from me, because my schedule is so stupid, uh yeah no you know your children and, and family are the great equalizers where sometimes i'm like look at you you've done you've done okay and then yep. they're like hey idiot uh yeah but my dad I, I'm, I have two brothers and uh my dad used to call us jerk and that was not individual jerks it was just uh, as a threesome we were jerk so he'd be like hey jerk and i was like yeah that's that's about right. And uh, now I understand the pain that we caused him <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I, am, I am the I'm the oldest of two of three boys, too. So I know what that that feels like. Hey, man, I'm the middle and I became the my little brother would claim that he's funnier than me. And he's an Episcopal priest. So well, my, my brother, who's the actor and the comedian, he's the middle middle kid, too. So I get that. A oh, lot. There hey, you go. Um, yeah. dude, thanks for taking the time today, man. It's always good to see you. Um, next time you're on the East Coast, you better holler at me so we can get together. But I appreciate taking Oh, yeah. Time. I'll, I'll make it up to Connecticut. Just come to New York. Just come to New York. <laughs> all right. That's all. That's all. We'll do something fun in Manhattan. Yeah, we'll go We'll go out drinking. It'll be fun. <laughs> Diet Wait. soda. Diet Coke. Uh, no, uh, you're one of the most tremendous people. And um, thank you. I count you as one of my friends. And thank God. And um, you know more about football. And you're better looking than the Peyton 
and uh, Eli's brother. So congrats. And I don't know. You, you heard me. You heard me, Peyton and Eli. What are you going to do about it? Uh, yes. No, that was I got to say my joke. I wanted to say at the end of that broadcast, which was which is bigger, Eli, your forehead or John Elway's teeth. So it made me I've never been happier in my life. That man, that's that was, a way to go out, way to go out. And I would probably argue it's Peyton's forehead, but. I think you he's know, good with it. And I think he's good with it. I don't know if they'll, they'll ever have me back on, but they're very nice people. They are very nice people. Yeah, we count them as they really too. are. They, I love Bill that. Mc I love that show because, like, at the end of that of the Seahawks game, when the time was counting down, they weren't calling timeout. Yeah, it was such, like, okay, this is where you call timeout and kind of, you know, take a look at things, and then you should call a timeout right here because this is the perfect time to call a timeout because you it's the fourth quarter. There's no way they're going to – that's a very long kick, and it should call a timeout. Why aren't they calling a timeout? It was so great. It's I love how wonderfully organic it is. It's fun Cheers. to watch it. Cheers. Joe McHale, everybody. Thanks for joining us, buddy.